Late in the last century, industry discovered a mineral with near magical properties. Fireproof, strong, resistant to acids, seemingly indestructible. Asbestos was hailed as the miracle fiber. For decades, it was used in brake linings, insulation, fireproofing, valves, gaskets, motors, and textiles. What was not made public was the knowledge that asbestos was a dangerous substance. Asbestos fibers, too tiny to be seen, did irreparable damage to the lungs of as many as 250,000 people who worked with it. We were told constantly, you know, this it won't hurt you, don't worry about it. There's not enough here. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the exposure is minimal. Then when you cut into that and rip it out and grind and cut, and that, all that stuff is in the air. It's airborne, and there's no way of ducking it. We used to walk home, and we'd be white. But our clothes would be actually white, and we'd shake it out as best as we could. But then that's what the women had to contend with when they washed our clothes. I'm being told continually that, look at you. You're a perfect picture of health. You don't look like you're sick. There can't be nothing wrong with you. And I've heard this from doctors, I've heard it from my coworkers, I hear it from everybody, you know. There's nothing wrong with you. Well, I have a walnut tree here in my front yard, and I don't take too good a care of it, and I'd say about maybe 40, 50 percent of these walnuts are rotten on the inside. And I have five walnuts in my hand here, and I defy anybody to tell me which one of these is good and which one is bad. You cannot tell what's inside of a person by, what, by the shell or by what they look like on the outside. four or five pretty good-sized bass. Said he got them first thing this morning, right up by the bridge. Wouldn't say what he was using. Rooster tails, I think. Oh, boy. I used to row all the way to the dam and not even feel it. Hey, we got all day. No need to knock yourself out. I gotta stop for a second. I'm not the young buck I used to be. <laughs> Well, face it, we're gonna slow down. But it ain't gonna help to worry about it, that's for sure. I don't know. I can't help thinking there might be something wrong with me. Stan, there's nothing wrong with you. I don't think I've ever seen you sick. And we've been working together, what, 29 years? Well, it's just that ever since Murphy, well, here's a guy who hasn't been out a day in his life. And all of a sudden, bingo. Hmm? I just couldn't believe it. Oh, I believe it. Look at all that pickled junk he used to eat. You'd croak, too. You're not afraid of that happening to you, are you? No, no what I'm afraid of is not being able to do this. You know, <laughs> I thought I'd do a lot of fishing when I retire, but now I do a little rowing, I get pooped. I, ca I can't even... Oh, the hell with it. So you get a trolling motor. So what do you think? Bait or lures? Lures. Shortness of breath, can't really do anything. Uh, I like to go into the mountains a lot, and uh, I have a five-year-old granddaughter, which outwalks me, believe it or not. But I was thinking the shortness of breath be is, was because uh, of aging. You know, like I'm getting old and I get, you know, you win get shorter. I can't get breath. I, uh, and then my sports, I can't swim anymore. I, it's just all my sports activities just are curtailed. I played a little golf, but I have to take a car. And, and that, that's what I'm limited to. Just let me know if there's anything I can do. All right, I will. Okay. Well, let me know. Bye-bye.
Smells good. Ah, uh, what a day. I am beat. Tom. That's what they call me. Stan's real sick. You got the flu or something? No, I mean real sick. It's in his lungs. Who told you this, Stan or Darlene? Darlene. That I woman just is a don't... worrywart. He went to the doctor. He's got some kind of lung disease, asbestositis. You mean asbestosis. Did he tell you about it? No, he didn't tell me about it. And I work with a guy, I see him every day. Don't you think I'd know if he was sick? Tom, the man is sick. It showed up on his x-rays. What if you have it too? Ah, oh, give me a break. But you worked alongside of him all these years. Yeah, that's right. And I can still do everything I ever did. Well, will you at least go and get checked out just to make sure? I don't need to. I'm not sick. Do I look sick? Stan doesn't look sick either. Honey, I'm worried about you. And you probably shouldn't be smoking. Oh, for God's sake. Can't a man have a little peace in his own home? It's important to realize that most people who are exposed to asbestos will never develop any asbestos-related disease. If disease does develop, however, it'll fall into one of two types, either scarring or cancer. With cancer, we can have cancer of the lung, mesothelioma, or cancer of the lining of the lung, or cancer of the throat, or digestive tract. With scarring, there are two types. There's scarring of the lining of the lung, or pleura, we call that pleural plaques or pleural disease. And then there's scarring of lung tissue, which we call asbestosis. Perhaps I can best describe asbestosis by drawing you a picture. There are thousands of tiny little air sacs in the lung. Next to each air sac is a blood vessel. Normally, there's a very thin membrane separating the air sac from the bloodstream. Oxygen gets through this thin membrane very easily. However, when you have asbestosis, you get a thickening of the wall of the air sac so that it makes it difficult for oxygen to get through. If enough of these air sacs are scarred, then you'll have shortness of breath. Bear in mind that your chances of getting this disease depend on how long you were exposed and how much dust you breathed in on a daily basis. The greater the exposure, generally speaking, the greater the risk. That's why it's so important to prevent any further exposure. Oh, I'm okay. Honey? I'll go back to sleep. Do you want some aspirin or something? I went over to see Stan after work. He's afraid he won't be able to keep doing his job. He can barely climb a ladder as it is. Is that why you're afraid to go to the doctor tomorrow? You're worried about your job? Well, we'd have a real hard time making it without my paycheck. Oh, don't jump the gun. It's not going to come to that. I just want you to get checked out. I'm telling you, I feel fine. You want me to go to the doctor so I can be sick too? No, I want you to go to the doctor so that you can be well. It doesn't always work that way. Stan was doing okay till they told him he had a disease. Going to the doctor doesn't make you sick, Tom. Besides, I can't see why you're comparing yourself to Stan. We both know you're in 10 times better shape than he is. I hope you're gonna keep that appointment tomorrow. So you can have something to worry about? No, so we can both get some sleep.
Very few men will even go to the doctor when they're hurting, much less for, uh, for an asbestos, which you don't even feel, especially at, 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 uh, at uh, first exposure. I mean, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna even realize anything's the matter. So why go to a doctor? I would say go now. If you, anybody that had been exposed to asbestos, I would go get an examination now and have it a picture, a screen every year from this point on out. When you come in for a screening, the first thing we'll have you do is fill out a form that asks questions about your medical and work history. You'll have chest x-rays, which will be read by an expert. You'll have a physical examination where the doctor will listen for what we call crackles, a sound like Velcro being pulled apart. That sound tells us whether you have scarring of your lungs or not. Finally, you'll have a lung function test to measure how much air you can take in after your deepest breath and how fast you can blow it out. This tells us if you have any impairment. When you're blowing to the machine, it's to make a tight seal around the mouthpiece, leaving your tongue away from the opening. You're going to put it in your mouth like this. Then you're going to breathe into the mouthpiece as hard and as quickly as you can, OK? Ready? Blow! Blow, 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 blow. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. Push it out. Here, take a look. Now, when we find these light areas around the outside of the lungs, like uh, here and here, we know there's some scar tissue on the pleura. And that's the sac around the lungs. These are called pleural plaques. How bad is it? Is it the same as asbestosis? No, no. Asbestosis is scarring inside the lungs. Your x-rays don't show that. Now, when we see plaques, we know there's been a lot of exposure, but there's usually not any impairment. So what does it mean? What it means is you should not be exposed to any more asbestos. If you absolutely have to work around it, you should make sure you're protected. That means wearing the proper mask and suit and uh, making sure they fit right. Here. Under OSHA law, your company is responsible for providing you with all of the protective gear and for training you in how to use it. Yeah, they're finally doing that. So what are you going to do? Yeah, you're the doctor. It's not a question of what I'm going to do. Um, there is no medicine I can give you, and there's no surgery to get the asbestos out of your lungs. But that doesn't mean that you can't do anything about your condition. You can. Yeah? Like what? Well, you've already done the first thing by coming in for a checkup. You should do that once a year. That and uh, do your best to stay healthy. Generally, take good care of yourself. You can also help prevent cancer by eating a diet high in vitamin A. That means uh, eating plenty of carrots and green leafy vegetables. So you're telling me wear bunny suits and eat bunny food? Hey, watch up, Doc. Next thing you're going to tell me to stop smoking, right? Oh, I'm not going to tell you. Now, that's up to you. Nobody can make you stop smoking if you don't want to. Yeah, I know. My wife's been trying for years. Well, look at it this way. In a person who's been exposed to asbestos, the lung cancer rate is four to five times normal. Now, smoking just by itself will increase that risk 10 to 20 times. Now, that's significant. But get this. Smokers who have been exposed to asbestos are running 60 to 90 times the risk. Well, that'd be me. So what's the use of stopping now? Well, you can't do anything about the asbestos already in your lungs, but you can do something about your smoking. If you were to quit smoking right now, then in a few years, your risk would drop back down dramatically. I tried many things. I went to smoke enders. I tried hypnosis twice. Uh, finally ended up at, uh, at uh, a cessation clinic that's run by uh, the Lung Association. He says, can you quit? I said, I'll try. So when I walked out, the nurse was there. I asked her what kind of cigarette she smoked. She says, Marlboro's. And I said, gee, I just happened to have a pack. I reached in my pocket, and I had one out, and I gave it to her, and that was it, and I haven't touched a cigarette since. Believe me, I tried. In 1980, I finally quit smoking. And I haven't had a cigarette since, and I... It was a hard thing to do. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life, but I'll never go back and do it again. Never, ever. That little motor's all right. Pretty slick. Got us all the way out here in no time. <laughs> sure beats rowing. <laughs> I guess. Oh, I don't know if you care for this brand or not, but uh, want one of these? Well, 
Don't mind if I do. Don't mind if I do. So far, due to quitting smoking, I feel that I'm doing great. You know, I'm still breathing. I can't do like what I should be able to do, but I, I'm alive. I never think about it. I had cancer. I had an operation. I'll go ahead on and do what I can do. The doctor said, when you get tired, just rest and go again and keep going. And that's what I do. Do something is all. It doesn't have to be high spirited. You can do other things besides swimming or, or jumping rope and doing things like that. You can do other things. You want to go dancing, just take dance waltzes and hold a girl closer. That's all. What else can you do?